I could use that's that right been, here. That's actually been taken down now, sadly, because we're planning to move in a few weeks, or well, a few months, hopefully, depending how. Sorry, for starting. Hey, hey, everyone! Welcome to the Tom's Hardware Podcast for August seventeenth, twenty twenty-one. Uh, we are here today with our, uh, as always, I'm Tom's Hardware Editor in Chief, Avon Pelch. I'm joined by Associate Editor Les Pounder, our Raspberry Pi expert, Ash Hill, and our very special guest, Thomas, Thomas, otherwise known as Mellifier, who has done some really amazing projects that we want to talk about. And of course, as always, we are taking your questions and comments. Uh, if you're on YouTube or, or Facebook, uh, or I think even um, Twitter, you can uh, chat us live. So, so Thomas, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been doing Raspberry Pi projects? Well, I got my first Raspberry Pi around, oh God, it's been a few years now. I actually still have it. It's right here. It's currently dead because I decided to put 18 volts through it. <laughs> By accident. <laughs> I used to use it for um, Octoprint and I accidentally uh, set the back converter to go the wrong way around. And okay. um, that was the end of that. But now my Octoprint runs on a Raspberry Pi 4, which it seems very happy with. Um, so how many Raspberry Pis do you have? Um, one, two, three, four-ish. There's maybe a fifth one in my closet somewhere, but I think about four. Four that I use. I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 that permanently lives on my desk that I use for mostly just prototyping and stuff like that. And then I've got a whole bunch of um, Raspberry Pi Picos all over the place that I, when they first came out, I didn't think I'd use them as much as I did, but now I've got like six of the little things everywhere. That's yeah. It, it just, they just overtook every, every project I was working on. They're just so easy. Hey, rip mute. I'm sorry. It's amazing. They're so easy to use. So, yeah. so, so, Thomas, you recently built a you recently built a tank called Zippy. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah, sure. So this is Zippy. He's just a little um, 3D printed, and I've got like a little 3D print, not 3D printed. Sorry, uh, just regular printed um, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. skin on it, and um, designed it all myself. Well. The 3D print is by, uh, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. It's in the link in my website. But um, I had to modify the, uh, the the motor holders to hold the um, the, the 12 volt motors that I've put in there, just for um, just because the the small motors that I used in the first one weren't very great. We really struggled with grass, but now he seems to zip along it fine. Um, just turning him on, so he's got a little LED on here that's an indicator, so it's green when it's starting up. And then it will um, it will progress through blue and then red if the controller is not connected and green when it's connected. So that's, it should it should it, it, he takes about fantastic. a minute. Yeah. So yeah. so what's what's on the inside? On the inside, there's a uh, a Raspberry Pi, a zero W, and uh, a motor controller, two 12 volt motors, and uh, just a lithium, eleven point four volt lithium ion battery. Oh, so we wow. like all battery, not lithium ion. <laughs> Wow. Because that battery seemed yeah. to last in it. Yeah. And I've got the little dongle out here too, so I can charge the battery without having to take it out. Um, so yeah. what kind of battery life do you get out of it? Honestly, I have not killed it yet. <laughs> <I just, laughs> That's I, great. You're charging it? I've never killed it once. Uh, yeah, now we can see the uh, the controller's connected because it's green, and I've got a controller labeled um, Zippy, especially for him. And he, so this trigger controls this wheel, and then I've got the other trigger set to the other wheel. Ooh, can't reach that. There we go. And I've got backwards on the uh, triggers. So forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. And I can just set them on the ground. Should I make him do the obstacle course now? Yeah. So do you have to manually control Zippy, or can or sorry? Do you have to manually control Zippy, or does Zippy have some automation as well? Uh, he does not as of yet. Although I really do want to put some automation in him. Let me switch it over to that one and roll him over there. I'm about to hit my tripod. There he is. 
Right, this is going to be a bit strange because I have to control him by looking at the uh, camera feed. But he can get over things like little um, boxes of stuff. Let me see if I can get up this. I'm probably going to fall off like four times. I kept <laughs> falling off when I was trying it. Oh, this is a very cool robot. This I is very like impressive. I'm, yeah. I'm really trying not to fall off there. I think, oh, bugger. <laughs> I have to retrieve him. Give me a second. I'm also loving the true maker assault course. What have I got lying around in cardboard? Let's build something with it. That that's a very uh, that's a very good course. Right, I'm back. I accidentally ripped, up, ripped out my headphones as well. Right. Let's hope we can get up this one. Oh. Well, <laughs> so kind of, an hour, so kind of an hour ramp, but we can see it's very durable. He, he is. He can take a tumble. He's taken many tumbles since I've built him. What kind of camera is that? Is that a GoPro? No. So that's a DJI Action. And uh, I got it because it was cheaper than a... Uh, than, um, I'm going to have to retrieve him again or just tip him slightly. Yeah, it's a it's a DJI action, and it it's a really good camera for its price. It does like to um, it does like to produce a bit of heat, and it does like to kill its batteries. But I've got about four of them, so never been a problem really. So, can you get a live feed of what it uh, a live and, feed of what it's viewing? Like, how do you so, use the camera? So uh, I can the the uh, the camera itself does have an app for for live viewing, but um, I could just as easily hook up a um, just a Raspberry Pi camera to the Raspberry Pi. And I've got a little um, test script that I've wrote to uh, to stream that to a uh, to a web UI. And uh, I've not I've not had the chance to actually put the camera in him yet. But I've not really had the need to because it, his range on the controller is maybe 15 meters. So it's it, you can't do a lot. You can't go far without um in there again. I really want to make this up. There we go. He's on the bed. Nice. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that looks fantastic. Yeah. And uh, the, the idea for him up here is just to tumble. <laughs> Listen, that is a lot, a lot better than I have a Yaboom tank that I kit that I bought and my son and I built. Yeah. And the top of it is very, the top of a camera mechanism is very fragile yeah. acrylic. If that falls, if it falls over like that, it, it cracks. So oh, no, that's that. <laughs> that's really sturdy. Yeah, no, he's he's surprisingly durable. And if he does break, I can just print new parts. But um, yeah, no, I've I've so right now he's he's kind of stuck on his camera bump. But usually I just drug him on the camera, and even the camera's fine. I got some mud <laughs> in that camera before, but he seems so, to be okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the three D printing process? Like what? How many pieces is it? What type of material um, did you use? So it, it's basically LA. It's oh, sorry, I can change my camera feed now because I can have sort of both. Um, so he's using. I've used basic PLA. Just I think it's actually Amazon basic PLA. It was just wow. the cheapest stuff I could find. And um, uh, God, he's he's quite a bit of printing time. The big pieces don't take that long, but um, each one of those treads is maybe ten hours of printing. And wow. then maybe yeah, and then maybe another hour just putting um, toothpicks in between each of them. <laughs> oh, so it's, so that's how they that's how the treads hold together. That's how they toothpicks? connect. Yeah, yeah. So you just get to these two pieces that just sort of connect together, and you just put a toothpick through them, and then just chop off the hard part, the the um, the sharp part of the toothpick. They look it's a bit to work. Of a process. They look to work really well because. It, Surprisingly, yeah. I think the original um, used filament in between that, but I didn't want to waste filament. But toothpicks are about the same size, so it works. Wow. Is it supposed to be print in place? Uh, no, no. Okay. It is no. like it's separate. Yeah, 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 you print it all separately. Yeah. So the bottom part separate, the sides are separate, the top separate, then it's a whole in the, the things that hold the motors are all separate. It's It's a really nice design. It's a really solid design. Just had to change that one thing where I had to put the um, 
I'm gonna have to change for the motors. But that's on my um, that's on my Thingiverse. What uh, what printer did you use? So I've got a um, I've got an end of yeah an end of free pro, which I got on Black Friday, and it is the best purchase I've ever made. I only got it uh, end of last year, and I've been so happy with it. I've I wish I got a 3D printer sooner, really, because they're such amazing, so amazing. There's a big community for Ender 3, so as far as finding help and support huge, huge. goes, it's... Just, it's just really on good. Reddit, it's it's insane. Just any yeah. problem you have, there's about 20 to 30 people just there within a second. Yeah, <laughs> and that and, and I mean, that's part of what makes Raspberry Pi great, right? It's people mm -hmm. have done all that thinking and there's support for it. Yeah. I'm having yeah. A, a different problem with my 3D printer. Right now I have a Flash Forge Adventure 3, which is a which is a nice print like I think is physically very nice printer, yeah. but there's not a lot of support out there. There's not a ton of support out there for it, and the software for it is it doesn't really work properly in Cura because it's not supposed to use Cura, and mm -hmm. the FlashForge software is not is not great. So it's a great printer, but the support is so yeah, is, is so so. So yeah. getting a popular thing really matters. It. it really does yeah no that community has been a huge help and they've been very supportive as well there's been a few projects i've posted on there and they're just like yes we love it, <laughs> it just, that that is great yeah. did you have to use any glue or were all of the parts just no, snapped no, no, together it's just screws so i i took apart an old vacuum cleaner and all those screws i've upcycled into zippy <laughs> wow nice work that's amazing that that is that is amazing. So, how much would you estimate it costs to build? Uh, oof. Uh, I want to say around 50, 60 pounds. I don't know, like seventy dollars. I think that's around. I think the most expensive part would be the Raspberry Pi and the motors. So everything else you can just buy. Um, like the the motor driver is. Um, oh God! You can get like a five of them for like a tenner. So they're they're really cheap. The um, filament the price of filament um yeah no around like 50 60 pounds yeah, that's uh, that's real that's, cheap. that's, that's yeah. really good i mean we do it for the experience not for, not for right actually. no not because it's cheap but it's just curious to see how expensive it was because i mean you it's take, that the, it's the kit that you bought over right exactly so if we look at i have it here i'm going to show i have it right here this is the yaboom Yaboom tank, okay, right? This is like a hundred and fifty dollar kit, hundred thirty, hundred wow. fifty dollar kit, right? It metal? Mm -hmm. or... It's metal, so this okay. is metal, right? Okay. So that's good. Yeah. But the this whole camera mechanism up here is yeah. very cheap uh, acrylic, mm -hmm. and at least once already I've had it fall uh, and fall and crack, and uh, the motors are not exactly. Uh, great either because you can yeah. see it can't like, i have to keep resoldering the wires to these mm. to these motors because they keep yeah. coming out um but uh so I mean, it looks intimidating yes so it looks mm. it looks good yeah. uh and you know metal is metal is nice but uh yeah. and it came with the it came with the board and it came with this kind of battery um are those right? just the uh, six 16, 18650s? 16, yeah. I'm not. I'm, they don't say. It says 11.1 .1 volts. I think I. Do you know what? The motors are exactly the same I use in Zippy. Uh, yeah. So the, the, the geared, uh, the geared 12 volt motors. Yeah. So, so anyway, like the treads here are these are plastic, mm -hmm. and they okay. all. I think they came. I think you. They came like this. Um, yeah, but anyway. A lot of time. That's, uh, but you know, like it looks like, I mean, yours looks actually neater. Like it's not open air, everything's contained inside. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing I will say is because this uses a Pi 4 with the software, you can do it's, things it's with it. Faster, yeah. So you one can thing, yeah. do object recognition, theoretically, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, Could one you... thing I don't like about Zippy is he takes about a minute to boot up just from the start. Mm -hmm. Could you use a regular size Pi in, in Zippy or is there not room? Uh, if I, I could, if I really wanted to force it in there, I feel like I could, but, um, I don't know if it's, if it's worth it, but right. probably could. Yeah. I, I, I did want to do a, um, 
Another uh, one thing I've got, I kind of have planned for him is actually having a uh, an arm on top of him. Oh, just, so just grab little things around the place. Oh, that. I really want to do that. Be... I really want to do that. It's in my Amazon shopping basket. All the servals, I think. Uh, all the servals and things. Wow. Like that. Listen, when you make that, you have to come back on and show it to us. That's, <laughs> I, that, that, that will be the ultimate. It'll be to have an arm that can grab. <laughs> yeah. That That's amazing. So that or like a camera that just looks around everywhere. But I think the arm would be a lot cooler. Oh, the arm. The arm yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. So yeah. you've also worked on some other amazing projects, right? You have yeah. a soap dispenser. Yeah, yeah. I still use that. I'm working on a version two now. I've, uh, it's here. I'm using a um, an IR uh, proximity sensor instead, which is a lot faster. And I'm hoping, I actually, w I'm waiting for some logic inverters for that to finish that off. And then I'll print off a new holder for it, but I'll still use the same motors and stuff. But um, yeah, the, I've got a Pico in there now, which I think is way overpowered for what it does. So I'm hoping this would just minimize the whole internal structure of it. And then right. hopefully make it cheaper yeah very um, cool what yeah. are some of your other projects that you're working on uh gosh where do i start right well i've got this thing uh this might be quite loud but it goes to... might be quite loud but we'll see it's like a little cat that comes out of the, uh, the top of it and grabs, uh, <laughs> it and it's supposed to put a coin there and he grabs it and he so what i've done is um this is a project between me and my partner who's an um who's an artist so she's going to paint the, the whole outside of it and change this guy to be something else, not a car. I'm not sure what she's going with yet, but I've, um, I've modified this to have a, uh, a raspberry Pico in there. So I can do, so I can do things like, um, just like retract his nice. arm halfway, things like that. I think that'd be pretty cool and, um, play different audio as well. Cause right now he plays a horrific meowing sound, which everybody seems to hate. So, um, <laughs> So hopefully that um that, that, that I can finish that off soon. I'm I'm waiting for a way to properly play music on the Raspberry Pi. But uh, sorry, not a Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico. Wow, um, that's the, that's uh, great. One, yeah, sorry, go on. I'm very interactive. Uh, there's, there's a breakout board that the Pico is attached to for the for the stepper motors, I believe. Um, right there. What, what is that? Yeah. So that's custom. So I've got like nice. A, it, it's just connectors. Yeah. No, it's all custom. Um, it, that just connects to the uh, to the board that was already here that has all the switches on it. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that this is just a, a, a USB power bank that I'm going to put inside mm -hmm. of there just to recharge it later. But um, yeah, no, that's just a breakout board that I've made for it, and um, I'm, I think I'm only using like ten pins less than. And That's yeah, not bad. I'll just, yeah it, it, I'm, I'm hoping to put a lot more functionality into it. Um, oh, is it a stepper motor that's been used to make the cat's no, paw no, come it, out? It's not a stepper motor, it's just, just a DC. Regular, yeah, just a regular ah. cheapo motor. Uh, it's it's the original one that came in with this, and um, yeah. I'm hoping I can just make it run backwards, forwards, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you've got some inline like control, like motor controller between the Pico and, and the motor itself. Oh, oh, I actually don't. I probably will have to, but for now I don't. For now, Living dangerously, it, yeah. For, yeah, for now it just it just runs and it's not been complaining too much. So I'm just kind of going with it. As as the problems occur, I'll fix them. But um, yeah, another thing I've added was a um, was a shoe. So originally this was like a money box where at the bottom you store money and you can take it out through the uh, through the hole. There. Mm -hmm. But um, I've changed it so that uh, when the when the coin actually falls in here, it just falls back in here and comes out this little hole at the back. It comes out this little hole at the back just for yeah. easy retrieval. I'm thinking for um, if we want to have it on display somewhere, we don't want to actually have to open it, shake it to try to get the coin out. We we'll just we we'll just take it out the back and put it in. It's more of a display piece when we when it's finished. But yeah, that's going to be really cool when it's done. And um, I've got another one here that's a bit more complicated, but um, I've got a I've got a video on it on my YouTube. This is a um, a rice cleaner because cleaning rice is a daunting task for me. So I've decided to basically make a small washing machine to automate it, and this is mostly prototyping. Um, 
got a Pico there, motor controller, some sensors, a screen, and um, in here it's just a, a motor at the bottom. A, uh, I can't remember the name of the sensor, but it checks the amount of particles in water, and just a little um, valve that gets rid of the water. And then here I've got a little drum that you put the rice in, and it just kind of swirls around in water. That's cool. Yeah, it, it's a it's one of the most involved projects I've done yet, but um, it's rewarding when you get to not have to wash rice when you want to make food. Yes. The projects tend to solve a lot of specific problems, I, but they do solve so, problems. Yeah. So I have um, I have ADHD, which means a lot of normal human boring things annoy me. <laughs> so I try to find. I, I, so I don't have the patience for them, but I have the patience to actually work and try to make uh, solutions for those problems, which my partner okay. finds very amusing that I can't wash rice for about 10 minutes, but I can spend two hours, four hours a day just programming something. She finds it hilarious, but, you know. Oh, I, I'm, the same, I'm the same way. It's the principle. Yeah. Just, it, I'd rather make something to solve this problem so I never have to do it again. It, it's, it's the principle, right? Like I'm always, we've talked on the show before about keyboard shortcuts. I will make a keyboard shortcut that saves me like a mill, saves me like yeah. half of a second. And I will spend a long time working on how to save that half a second because mm. it's just, it shouldn't be done. A human shouldn't be doing a robot's yeah, job. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no. So I've only, I only learned programming in uh, the beginning of 2020. So I started with Python. Uh, wow. Just know. imagine what you That's could funny. do. <laughs> what you could do next yeah um so the first thing i made was a um a program to organize my files because um i just got really tired of organizing them and um so one thing the thing i do is i offload all my cameras into a folder and i just run a script that sorts them all by day and everything and it just puts them in my archive so i uh, if i want to retrieve nice. something i can just go into that date but um i don't have to do that manually which i've had to do for a few years before I decided to finally buckle down and do the hard thing and learn programming and never have to do it again. Yeah, so now I just run a program and does it. Yeah, yeah, so fantastic. That's, that that is absolutely amazing. So speaking of things you can program, Les, you have been looking at, at a new at a new board that allows you to program RG, RGB, correct? Correct. Yes, this is very brand new. It's not even out yet from Pimeroni. So I'm going to switch over to some screen grab so you can see what it is so what we've got is plasma 2014 as you can see in the center of the board we have raspberry pi pico rp2040 chip this board is designed solely for rgb blinkies it's not there to make robots or make anything move it's just there to make led lights so rgb leds light up it works with apa 102 leds known as dot star on ada for its website and also ws2812 which is neopixels lovely little board it's got screw terminals to hold all the um, connections in place powered by usb-c which also powers the leds up to a certain length because the more leds you have in a chain of these addressable leds the more juice you're going to need so i've got a, a simple demo which i'm going to show you now just a one meter uh, neon type led which is actually, actually the photographs just one meter um neon type led running at five volts and there's 96 leds inside it I just I've darkened down the desk a little bit and put the exposure down just so you can see it running. So here is the board running. I've got three inputs. I've got the boot button, which is user programmable to be an input, and I've got two specific buttons A and B for inputs. So if I press boot now, you'll see like a candy cane swirl of light. That's using two four loops to uh, pick out the odd and even numbers and then light up the LEDs that are odd and even in the 96. This is one of the standard Adafruit tests. Go through every single LED, make them all one color, a nice color wash. And the final test is a rainbow. Just go through the simple rainbow colors. I really do like this board. It makes LEDs, RGB LEDs, I should say, really simple to use. Now it has got other breakouts as well. You can see on the photographs, there are some breakouts for connections like I swear, sorry, I squared C, SPI, that sort of thing, uh, analog inputs as well. We've also got a Stemma QT connection, which is really handy when you get some 
attachments like uh, rotary encoders or external, uh, external buttons. You can plug them straight in, use Adafruit Circuit Python library, which is compatible with this board, and you can make lots of cool light-based projects really easy. And I'm liking this board now for, because we're going into the holiday season. I know it's still late summer. It's not, not getting to Halloween just yet. But as a maker, we have to think ahead to think, what are we going to be making in October with pumpkins and lots of orange LEDs? And then Thanksgiving, Christmas, and beyond. Lots of lights. Keep them up all year round. There's any holiday you can think of. Exactly. We have a star in our window, which actually lights up all year round. It's full of uh, neopixels. Um, John, to answer your question, estimated cost? No idea, really. I'm going to hazard a guess of about £15, so maybe about $20, $25. That's a guess based on previous boards of this ilk. So they had a similar board. What was it now? The name escapes me, but there are other boards with a similar way that are about $15 to $20, I'd say. So I don't even know when it's out. It's all super secret. I know it's soon, and I know I have one to play with, and it's going to be reviewed quite soon as well. But right now, that's all I can tell you about this great little board. Still, that's that that makes it really easy to use those light strips. So, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I before if, if you wanted to use light strips, I'd be easy. You could just wire it into the Pico's um, GPIO or an Arduino or a Pi, whatever you want to use. But with screw terminals, you've got a nice secure connection, and also it's got the electronics on board to make sure that it's done safely. But sometimes, well, a lot of times, you need a capacitor. For the neopixels to make sure that they um, get the right amount of current and the right amount of power and it just discharges nice and slowly it's got a nice what's the word now like a trickle almost of power rather than just like the onrush of current i think it's also handy that it has the two buttons built in if you guys remember a few weeks back when the pico first came out i hooked up one to the strip of leds i had behind me well it's not up right now but i had added a button just one button to cycle through the different features and the fact that it has two that is a little bit handy to have that ready to go yeah and you plug in stem qt uh, devices you've got sensors screens buttons whatever you fancy and with circuit python it's just ready to go great so um so ash you have been uh playing with an with a different operating system for raspberry pi correct yeah, I wanted to share a cool little operating system with you guys today. Uh, it's fun to play with and it's kid friendly, which is always good if you're looking for an introductory platform to get any youngin that you know into coding. You want to check out Cano OS. I'm going to switch my screen over to show you guys a little bit of what it looks like here. Um, I do have it set up behind me, but it's hard to get the screen to share through OBS. So I'll try and show you what I can in just a minute of it. But here's a quick picture of it on the website. It's entirely kid focused. It's got lots of games. It's got programming tutorials. If you're familiar with using Scratch, it's very similar to Scratch programming with Kano. Um, the user interface, like I said, is super user friendly. It has a block layout of apps that kids can choose to open up programs. It's really intuitive. If you have a kid that's been playing around with any kind of Apple device or an Android device, they're going to pick up Kano OS. There's also a subscription service that they offer called Kano Club that gives you access to tutorials and there's a Kano Club community, but you don't have to use it, uh, use that at all to make use of the operating system. But if you wanna check out Kano, they do have an addition uh, for the Raspberry Pi and you can find it at kano.me slash us slash downloadable. There are a few different options available. The one I have set up today is just the computer kit touch version for the Pi 3 and I am running it on a 3B plus. This operating system was released in 2019, but it seems to run just fine. You can choose whether or not you want to actually connect it to the internet, if that's a concern for you. Um, you will need the internet to use the Kano Club services with it. But it's really cool. I, I like uh, I like setting it up earlier. It had a really cute setup introduction. It sort of talks to you in a way. It's like a text-based, you know, this, the words come up on the screen. It's like, hello, you know, what's your name and stuff like that. So the kids can answer and it's like, give me a background and you have to drag and drop a few things over to get the background to apply. And I've got it behind me. I'm going to move my desk here. You can kind of see it. It's got like the matrix is happening behind me, but it's not green. It's pink. I'm going to get my keyboard here. It's just a USB keyboard. I don't have a touch screen set up, even though it's the touch version. I just have a small monitor with HDMI connected and this Logitech 2-in-1. 
So if I can get it to power on, you can't see anything. That's great. But believe you me, there are some apps there that you can choose. And they look really fun to click on. In fact, there's something about the vibe of Cano OS that takes me back to mid-2000s playing Flash games on new grounds, addicting games, mini clips. Like, it just, it, it's a really appealing design. I think the people who made it grew up playing Flash games because it's got things mixed in that aren't just games, but like Google Maps and just the way it's laid out. You want to mm -hmm. click on all of it. You want to play it, with all of it. It's 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 definitely very cute. They used to, Cano used to have, I think you can still get one somewhere, but they're out of production. They used to have build your own Raspberry Pi PCs. You It would yeah. give you a kit. Uh, I reviewed a couple of them. They give you a kit and you had like a, a plastic screen and you plugged the Raspberry Pi in. It was, it was a three a 3b and you know they'd give you a keyboard and a screen and and then they would give you a card with with that os on it and uh now they seem to have transitioned to a windows 10 based uh pc that they're selling which has a lot of i think some of the same software on it but for windows uh but yeah. uh what was really cute about that os and definitely worth checking out is some of the games that they had on there so they had like um I really loved the game. My son and I used to play with this when he was like five and six, um, where it was like a Linux terminal, like text game to teach you about the Linux terminal. Yeah. It was sort of like Zork type of game, but it was Linux terminal. Uh, and uh, I'm actually kind of curious if you can just get some of those games separately. They probably exist somewhere. Uh, or they had another one where you kind of, walk it looks a little bit like ultima or something where you're sort of walking around it's open world and there are these different parts of a computer that you're in so one of them was like a, uh you know was this the screen one of them was the cpu or whatever and it's like you're walking around this little world learning about these things so uh you know cute cute for kids um lots of great stuff for kids but um what uh Thomas, what was your first uh, OS that you used on Raspberry Pi? Was it Raspberry Pi OS? Yeah, yeah. Because I had the Raspberry Pi 2 first. So, yeah, it would have been, well, whatever it was called back then. But, yeah, Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, no. Yeah. yeah really good. I it's... mostly just SSH into it and stuff like that. But yeah. I rarely ever used the um, HDMI port on it. Yeah, to be fair, most of my pies are, are go ahead. Yeah, I just have too. a preset for um, SSH, and whenever I boot, whenever I make a new SD card for Raspberry Pi, I just drop them in and just SSH into it. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I I usually do that too. So I wanted to thank uh, Thomas so much for joining us. Amazing, amazing work. Uh, thank you as always to all of you who listen and watch. We are here every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. UK time, 2.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern time, and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone.